That is one big pile of shit. For better or for worse, the fourth part of Brian Forrester's series on the quote-unquote megalithic structures of Baalbek is without narration. So I thought since he put minimal effort in on his video, I'll put minimal effort in on my video and just give a long drawn out narration, peppered here and there with pauses to go over some actual engineering as best I can, and we can discover what he did wrong and what the correct answer looks like. So we can start here and he says notice the size of these blocks. What he's trying to get from that statement is some sort of grandiose idea that these are unnaturally large bricks, right? But again, as I've stressed in the previous three iterations, three sets in this series, a big brick and a little brick both require the same total type of work. There's nothing supernatural about a large brick <laughs> as opposed to a small brick. It's just a time constraint difference. Brian then continues on to these columns. Cool big columns, right? You would think, given the previous example, he's going to say these are so big Romans couldn't do this. Funny enough, that's going to backfire on him later on. Again here, we have an important distinction that Brian Forrester overlooks that I want you to pay attention to. Those little bricks? Perhaps Roman. This big brick? Well, but this? Is that possibly Roman as well? What is the difference between these two besides just size? Size is not the distinguishing factor. They both can be made by hand tools. One takes a bit more time, but they're the same product. Notice two types of stonework? What two types of stonework here? We have large bricks, megalithic as he calls them on the side, very textured, very uh, unpolished if you will, and then we rotate around he rotates up to the ceiling to see that nice dome structure. He wants you to connect the idea that the sides of the walls and this top Roman structure are different. He calls it recycled. And that to me is telling. He says recycled on purpose to make you think that it's lesser, that's somehow not quite as impressive. I don't understand how building a wall with unpolished rock is less impressive than creating a standing arched ceiling out of what seems to be more polished rock. How is one, how is the wall less impressive and the ceiling more impressive? As Brian Forrester leaves that very impressive hallway, he goes into that conundrum, that confusing part I was talking about earlier. Focuses on the foundation bricks, these huge, very giant slabs of stone, very impressive. Scans up to those columns. To me, the columns and the stone working on top is more impressive. But he asks if they're Roman. And keep in mind from the beginning of this conversation, the Romans showed up after the megaliths. That's his argument. The Romans were not the advanced technology. The Romans were the basic technology, the hand tools. These large bricks that we're seeing here apparently could not have been made in the same way those columns could have been made. That is the argument he's trying to make here by comparing these two things, by calling the columns Roman and by calling the bricks megalithic. And he expands on it going forward here. The Romans found a megalithic site, meaning the Romans found these bottom bricks and decided to transform it, use it by adding their own columns and adding this cool rock art here. That's the more impressive thing to me is that amazing column work, that amazing artistry on top. Not the, the fact that they're big bricks on the bottom, but that's the difference here. What is more impressive? What do you think takes um, a better feat of engineering? And beyond that, could either of those not have been done by hand tools? Could either of those not been done by the technology provided? Yes, they both could have, especially making a rectangle. <laughs> Brian Forster wants you to believe that there were two different builders at this particular location, Belbeck. One of them was megalithic and had advanced technology, the other was Roman and did not have advanced technology. One was ancient, one was rather well known. And it's really questionable to me to see the difference. One brick is big, one brick is little. Somehow those take vastly different amounts of technology to construct. 
and finally we get to Brian Forrester transitioning over to some broken up rock along the side of the building. Some cool looking limestone, what have you, pieces of column are uh, most likely demolished over time. It looks like some caskets in the back, but he wants to focus on these brighter purple and pink colored rocks, rhyolites and granite as he calls them. I see no reason to disagree with that geologic assertion. However, the thing he wants to point out here is not that they're rhyolite and granite because, well, they were picked probably for the color, it's that they're Aswan granite and Egyptian rhyolite from a very far distance away from Belbeck's source. And what he fails to take into account, what he fails to present to you, is that Belbeck is a Roman temple. Lots of money, lots of wealth was poured into Belbeck because you gotta make the gods happy, right? Shipping rock long distance is not necessarily a thing that requires advanced technology. You put the rock on a boat and you sail it over. And our final seemingly evidence of advanced technology are saw marks. <laughs> I don't get how a saw mark is an example of something the Romans couldn't have done. They're saw marks. What do you think the Romans cut rocks with? They cut them with saws. Ancient machining, that doesn't make any sense. And that's all four parts. Again, I want to stress at this point that this is not cherry picking. I was told to watch this series by a ancient technology supporter because this was supposed to prove to me that places like Belbeck could not have been built with the means that modern day archaeologists assume they had. Uh, the ancient Phoenicians, the ancient Romans, what had you, had hand tools and apparently Belbeck couldn't have been built by those. I think I've provided enough of an argument that there's no reason to assume that. There's no ancient aliens here. There's no lost technology here. There is a lot of people with a lot of skill working very hard to build what they wanted to build.